The kill screen in the original arcade version of Pac-Man is a classic example of a side effect due to unintended integer overflow. If you manage to reach level 256, the entire right side of the screen turns into a garbled mess and it is impossible to clear the stage. You would think something as static as the level layout wouldn't be dependent on what level you're on, so let's find out exactly why this happens. Pac-Man is a relatively simple game, and each level is pretty much the same apart from more difficult enemy movement. The only thing on the screen that changes depending on what level you're on is the level counter in the bottom right, represented by these fruits. If you're not familiar with how the fruits represent the level, here's a short explanation. The first level is a cherry, the second is a strawberry, the third and fourth are peaches, the fifth and sixth are apples, the seventh and eighth are melons, the ninth and tenth are Galaxian flagships, the eleventh and twelfth are bells, and the thirteenth and onward are all keys. The game only shows the current level's icon and the past six levels for a total of seven icons shown at once. This means that once you get to level 19, you will just see seven keys for the rest of the game. Internally, the game stores these icons in a table that is 20 elements long. It includes each of the fruits, one per level, and then the final key eight times. In order to draw the corresponding level icons on the screen, a range from one to seven of these elements are chosen to be drawn one after the other. The algorithm that determines this range is split into three different cases. In case A, the level number is less than eight. This corresponds to the fact that the range may include fewer than seven fruits. The start of this range is always the cherry, and the end of the range is determined by the level number. If we aren't on level seven, then extra spaces are erased. The number of blank spaces is just seven minus the level number. In case B, the level is greater than seven, but less than 19. This corresponds to the fact that there are exactly seven icons to draw, but which ones depends on the level. The end of the range is still determined by the level number, but the start of the range is now also determined by the level number, just six fewer. And finally, in case C, the level number is greater than 18. This means that all of the icons will always be keys. The range in this case is fixed to always go from element 13 to 19, which is the last set of keys. There is actually one more key at the end of the table that is never used, which suggests that possibly eight icons were shown at a time instead of just seven. If we iterate through all of the levels from one to 20, you can see how smoothly the level counter represents the current level in a nice intuitive manner. So what causes level 256 to confuse the level counter and destroy the map? 256 is greater than 18 after all, so you would expect it to follow case C and display seven keys. The tiny bit of information you need to know to understand what goes wrong is that the level number is represented as a zero base index instead of a one base index. This means that level one is represented as zero, level two is represented as one, and so on. The algorithm for drawing the level counter adds one to this value to get the actual level number. This number is treated as an eight bit byte, which means the values it can hold range from zero to 255. A zero is represented by setting all eight bits to zero, and when all of the bits are set to one, it represents 255. If you try to add one to 255, all of the bits flip and roll over back to zero, since 256 would be represented as a one in the ninth bit, which doesn't exist here. So this effectively means that level 256 is actually treated as level number zero for all intents and purposes. What does this mean for the level counter display function? Well, zero is less than eight, so case A will be executed instead of class C like we wanted. So the range of fruits to draw will start at one, the cherry, and end at zero, the, hmm. What does it mean to end at an index that is less than the starting point? Let's look at another example. If we were on level three, the range of fruits to draw would be from one to three. The process is draw fruit number one, add one to get two, draw fruit number two, add one to get three, then draw fruit number three. This fruit is the last one in the range, so we stop there. If we extend this process to the case where the end of the range is zero, it would seem like it would never end and we would just be drawing fruits forever. But just like the level number itself, the temporary value that holds the index of the fruit to draw is also an eight bit value 
which means it also has the property that when you add 1 to 255, it overflows back to 0. So the process would be draw fruit number 1, add 1 to get 2, draw fruit number 2, add 1 to get 3, and so on. Then eventually, draw fruit number 254, add 1 to get 255, draw fruit number 255, add 1 to get 0, and draw fruit number 0. At this point, the fruit we just drew matches the end of the range, so we stop there. This means that on level 0, 256 fruit are drawn in total. Which is kind of a problem, because if you remember, the table containing the fruits is only 20 elements long. Now let's get into the more technical stuff. The table that holds the level icon data is stored at address 3B08 in memory, and each of the 20 entries is 2 bytes long. One determines the icon's graphics, and the other its palette. For example, the cherries graphics start at tile number 90, and it uses palette 14. Normally, this table is indexed from entries 0 to 19. If you try to read entry number 20, you get data that doesn't have to do with the fruits at all. In fact, it is mostly music and sound effect data. Whatever data gets read will be treated as a graphics tile number that is most likely not going to correspond to that of a fruit. This is how the kill screen gets its glitchy tile aesthetic. As for how these glitchy tiles get strewn all over the right side of the screen, we have to take a look at the tile map. The tile map for the entire screen is stored in memory at address number hex 4000. 1024 bytes correspond to each tile's number and then 1024 more bytes for each tile's color. The way that the bytes map to the screen is a little odd, in that the first group of bytes control the bottom margin of the screen from right to left, row by row. The majority of the rest control the main map in the center of the screen from top to bottom, column by column. And finally, the last group controls the top margin where the scores are shown. Each fruit takes up four tiles, and normally they are drawn on the bottom margin. The intended space for the level counter is from address hex 4004 to 4011 for the top row, and hex 4024 to 4031 for the bottom. The top right corner of the first fruit sits at hex 4004, the second at 4006, then 4008, and so on. Just add 2 to get the position of the next one. Let's see what happens when we try to draw all 256 of our fruit. The cherry is first drawn at address hex 4004. The other three tiles of each fruit are found by adding 1 to the address to get the top left tile, then adding hex 20 or 21 to get the bottom right or bottom left quarters. Then, the strawberry, two peaches, two apples, and a melon are drawn next in line. So far, so good. If we stopped here, this is exactly what level 7 would look like. But we still have 249 fruit to draw, so let's keep going. The other melon, the two galaxians, the two bells, and one key are drawn with no issues, other than that they have escaped the intended bounds for the level counter. The next key is drawn with no problems as well, but since this part of the tile map isn't drawn to the screen, you can't actually see it. The third key is the first icon that starts going wrong. Its top right corner should be located at address hex 4020, which means its other three tiles are stored at addresses 4021, 4040, and 4041. But once we hit address hex 4040, tiles begin being drawn on the top of the actual map. Since the main map is stored in columns instead of rows, the bottom two tiles of this key end up above one another at the top right of the screen. As we continue to draw the other five keys, more of the main map becomes obscured. The top half of the keys are still being drawn on the bottom of the screen, overriding the bottom half of the already drawn fruit. Then finally, we hit the 21st entry in the table and begin to draw garbage tiles onto the screen. The rest of the bottom row of the screen is overwritten, as well as the right side of the map. The 31st icon is drawn at address hex 4040, 4041, 4060, and 4061. Now the entire icon is on the main map. The rest of the glitch tiles are drawn down the right side of the map, making their way towards the middle of the screen. Since each icon overwrites half of one of the previous ones, after the drawing is complete, every pair of tiles corresponds to one of these fake icons. These aren't just false graphics either, since the tile map is also responsible for how Pac-Man and the ghosts interact with the map physically. 
Most of the tiles that aren't supposed to show up on the map are free to move over, but some of them act like walls. Eventually, all 256 fruit are drawn, and the entire right half of the screen is scrambled. If you remember, the last step of case A was to draw blank tiles if we weren't on level 7 yet. Well, since the game thinks we're on level 0, it draws 7 minus 0 equals 7 blank spaces after the fruits. This completes the malfunctioning of the algorithm, and the damage has been done. Afterwards, the number of remaining lives is drawn on the bottom left of the screen, which hides most of the level counter down there. It is because of this that the resulting screen doesn't make it plainly obvious what is going on. The remaining part of the level counter on the bottom is disguised within the glitchy mess. The level begins, and now you're stuck on level 256 forever. You can only move on to the next level when Pac-Man eats 244 pellets, but most of them have been destroyed by the garbage. There are a few pellets mixed in with the glitchy mess if you can find them, and they even respawn after you die. Unfortunately, with a maximum of 5 extra lives, this limits the number of pellets you can eat to 168. Interestingly, this means that the entire game is finite, and the maximum score possible is 3,333,360 points. It takes even the most skilled players over three and a half hours to pull this off. The current world record as of when this video was made is 3 hours, 28 minutes, and 49 seconds by Dave Race.